Is, was there questions that you were tracking or should we open it up here to? Sure, um, I have a few questions. Um, Drea, would you like to share your question around uh, the integrity of uh, sharing uh, mindfulness for trauma clients in the time of uh, trendy marketing? Yes, I, yeah, I had, a, I had a question regarding, um, right, the, the holding integrity and care around uh, true trauma clients um, because right now it seems like trauma is the trendy marketing thing um, and and I'm noticing like for for trauma cl uh, clinicians and, and people who actually service the trauma um, clients are, are being asked to do summits you know especially in the virtual arena now mm. um, to do summits and and you know hold, mindful groups and things like that. And a lot of times um, they're not often either trained or informed about it. So what I'm noticing personally is they have these containers and often the facilitators themselves will say, you know, everybody has trauma. So, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. And they tend to project and it it comes across like they themselves have trauma and and you can almost see and feel that the container is, is no longer safe. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost like it's traumatizing the, the participants themselves. And so by the time like I have to come up and do my piece, it's like, damn. Like, you know, and, and, and it's like, I, I don't, how do you, like, how do you kind of maintain the integrity of, 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 of the title of, of trauma facilitators when you're partnering with people or, you know, who tend to really dilute the trauma, you know, especially in this time where there is facts that, you know, everyone does experience trauma now. But and there are levels to it, but there are people who just really do not believe that there's strong trauma and you know, because of COVID, everybody's traumatized. So I'm just, you know, and it's just a trendy thing right now because you can get a lot of people on a Zoom or a summit. So it's it's challenging. So I'm just how do you navigate that? <laughs> I'm mostly I'm with you in it. It makes me think of Zoe earlier when you talked about like, I'm not a trauma, I'm not trained as a trauma professional. And that to me is a really, it's a move of respect and integrity for the tradition. But then Drea, like you're saying, I'm seeing people throw the word around in pretty, pretty increasingly uh, like a wide aperture, <laughs> like including, including everyone. Have you heard of this term concept creep? Have you heard of that? I hadn't, I had just heard about it recently, Haslam, I think, but it's a whole idea that in the humanities, certain terms will tend to become more diffuse over time, trauma being one, it's crept out. So I hear people say, wow, that, that part of that traffic jam was really traumatic or, and so I think it's a great question. I'm kind of in it with you, honestly. Um, because when, if it just becomes, if everyone's traumatized all the time, then what do we even mean? And what's the difference between trauma and suffering? I'll say that I try pretty hard when I'm presenting the material to stay pretty true to uh, the diagnostic and statistical manual definition of trauma, which some of you, that's, you know, that's really thought of as, um, it's kind of the go-to diagnostic criteria and it talks about, um, uh, I'm trying to remember, the actual, actual or threatened death, serious injury, or threat to physical integrity. So to me, when we're in the realm of trauma, we're talking about survival. We're talking about deep survival-based responses. Now, people may have those responses based on perceived violence. Like We can have that happen a lot of ways, but I do want to try to maintain some kind of container 
around trauma being the worst kind of suffering that we can experience. Um, and I think that comes, just my opinion, I think it comes through our embodiment. Like when you just talked about it right now, I feel you trying to be both, res res I, I feel your respect for people, you know, like, yes, we can all experience pain and suffering. What do we mean by trauma? So I think in the embodiment of respect for the term and the tradition of research that's gone into it, that seems to help. But I, but I'm also just with you, like what you're seeing, I'm seeing a lot as well. And I think it can be, it just brings a lot of people out to the webinar, but it's not helpful. It just drums up a lot of like whips up a lot of energy. And I, I don't think that's helpful. So I'm open to suggestions from others as well, but I'm see I am seeing that happen for sure. I see, I just want to, one more thing, Amy, um, and then Dre, if you have anything else you want to share, Amy, you mentioned about opportunity to heal, to explain trauma. I agree. I do find a lot of people go, oh, wow. Like that makes sense that I was having such a deep survival response around X, Y, Z, like just being exposed to trauma. One thing I will say and this relates to Zoe, when I'm thinking about you, about what you were saying, but really for all of us, unless you're a trauma professional, or you're doing specific trauma work. I don't encourage that people use the term trauma inside of their meditation work. If anything, I'm, I prefer dysregulation because the minute that you bring in trauma, like, well, it sounds like you might have trauma or, you know, we all experience trauma, people get, it goes a bunch of different ways. Some people are empowered by that and they go, yeah, I experienced trauma. Other people feel very disempowered and like, whoa, I had experienced trauma. I, I never felt like that. So the word is so charged that unless that's your domain, I really encourage you to talk about nervous system dysregulation as a way in to talk about the impacts of adversity um, and trauma and COVID, for example. So trauma is just so loaded. So I just want to mention that. Dre, anything you want to add before um, shifting or follow up? No, I appreciate that. I mean, it's good to know, like, um, I'm not alone with, like, yeah. feeling that and, and experiencing it. Um, and I also love the the kind of shift um, in in perspective with what you just said about the, the nervous system uh, deregulation uh, yeah. title. Yeah. Um, I love that. And and I think that would also help with uh, people who may have uh, webinars or I could, I could tell them, you know, Hey, maybe don't title it that maybe. you can, Right. Right. You know? right. Yeah, totally. totally. So, yeah, so, That's great. Cool. 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 Cool.